Hey everybody. How's everyone today? First of all, I want to say thank you to everyone for all your wonderful feedback on my last video. That was really nice. <laughs> oh, I'm sitting in a parking lot. I don't know if you can tell that. But I am. I'm in the co-op parking lot. It used to be Safeway. Now it's co-op. Anyways, I couldn't find any nicer place to park, so here I am. It's like plus 17 Celsius today, so all the parks are full, put it that way. If there would have been a colder day, then there would be plenty of places to park. i got to put my sunglasses back on. Sorry about that, guys. Can't tell what I'm looking at, but I'm looking here, right there. <laughs> or I'm trying to. I might eventually, you know, do that. I look around, I get distracted. Anyways, hang on here. Give me a second here. There we go. Uh, one of my questions to myself was, how long have I had this channel? Since 2006. I may have said that in the last video. What's my channel about? There's a good question. From here on in, it's like going to be kind of a vlog about my van life, which hasn't quite started, because you can see I've got seats back there still. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to wind up at a junkyard and asking them, how much are you going to give me for those? And whatever they say, that'll be great. And I'll just take it and get rid of the damn things. So I've seen other seats for sale for like days on end. And I've tried to get a hold of an auction place, but it's Good Friday today, so I think I'll give them till next week. And then maybe if they don't get a hold of me about them or they don't want them, then I'll try the junkyard approach because that could be all I wind up doing. As long as they're gone, <laughs> I can sleep back there. That's my biggest concern. So that's what this channel is going to be about. I know that for the last 13 years, since 2006, it's been about this, that, everything, nothing in particular. And in the future, it's hopefully going to be about my van life. If that succeeds, we'll see. Oh, my foot's so sweaty. I'm not used to this heat. Yeah, it's plus 17, and I'm like, oh, it's hot. But then I am sitting facing the sun, and it's blaring through my glaring through my windshield. So that could be helpful. Here's a subject, changing jobs. Does it cure burnout? Yes and no. I used to serve the public and I got very burnt out. So very burnt out. It was insane. I was starting to yell at people and I knew that was wrong. So like, don't do that. So I quit that job before they fired me. And now, I serve the public from behind the scenes. I'm a page, I'm a library page. So I check items in, I put them on a cart, and then I push the cart out into the library, out into the main areas of it, where the shelves are, and I shelve things. And then when people put holds on things, I go and look for those things, sometimes the exact things I just shelved. And then I route them correctly, because we've got nine branches, in our city of the library and sometimes you know the item is in my library where I work at but it needs to go to a library across town because that's where the patron wants it to go to because it's closer to them right so if I wrote it correctly I am then serving the patron correctly because I mean I don't want to make them wait I don't want to wait for my latest item that I've put on hold, and I am a patron too of my own library. I use it heavily. I've watched so many movies and read, well I haven't read so many books, no, I've only read two books in the last 10 years, 15 years. I can't seem to pay attention long enough to read anymore. It has to really engage me or I'm done. So does job burnout get cured if you change jobs? Yes and no because I'm starting to feel burnt out at the job I'm at. And I'm questioning, is that the job itself? Or is that 
other reasons. I think it could be other reasons that I'm not willing to go into on a public video. So that ends that subject, doesn't it? Hmm. What to sell, what to keep. That's been a major headache in my life. Basically, does it fit in my van? No, then I probably should sell it. <laughs> yeah, that's about easy as that. Oh, yeah, and I've got a lot of stuff in my condo. The other day I was taking pictures of things because I know that this auction place that I've gotten a hold of, they're going to say, well, what does the bed look like that you want to sell? What does the dresser look like that you want to sell? So I've got pictures of everything ready for when they contact me back. I've contacted them twice, but, excuse me, like I said, it's Good Friday today and it's an Easter long weekend, so they, like me, probably have family, they'd like to visit them. And Another subject I'm thinking about, parking, like with my van, to sleep. As I drive around the city, I'm looking at it through completely different eyes. I'm seeing places where I could pull in, park, for the night, and sleep. And then there's places like I'm at right now. I'll show you where I'm at. I'll flip the camera around. This is the spot to boondock, which is essentially what I'm doing right now. Yeah, I'm sitting here in the daytime, sipping my coffee. Boondock. And I don't mind this, it's nice. <laughs> Watch the people walk by listen to the traffic. And it's nice. I can handle this. The only part that worries about me, about van life in the current city that I live in, is winter. Winter is not friendly in this province. I live in the prairie provinces. I'm in Saskatoon to be specific. And it's smack dab in the middle of the freaking prairies. It's windy in the summer. It's dusty. It's hot. You wouldn't think Canada could get really, really hot, would you? You think we're living in igloos, don't you? No, I'm kidding. But maybe some of you do. I don't know. I've honestly gotten that question when I, you know, do you live in an igloo? Not recently, no. <laughs> kidding. But seriously, I don't live in an igloo. I live in a condo, but yeah, minus 40 with a wind chill factor. There's one other van dweller that I know of in this city, and he wound up rent renting a garage and parking in a garage, so then he affectionately called himself a garage dweller. I was like, yeah, man, that's cool. And he was so happy to get out of that garage this spring. Oh my God, he's out there right now. I'm hoping to run into him someday, actually. That'd be cool. I may have to actually try and engineer that. Because <laughs> it doesn't seem to be working any other way. <laughs> uh, yeah. Don't know what else to say, guys. I'm kind of out of... My brain is on holidays just like I am here. I, mean, I would normally be at work today. Oh, and speaking of work, I had to do it all by myself yesterday. Normally there's two of us. One person does all the returns and the other person works on the delivery. Because the delivery is all those items that are coming in. They're coming home or they're either on hold for somebody. So they're going to go on the hold shelf. I had to do that all by my lonesome yesterday. I was very thankful it was a small delivery. And then there was the afternoon delivery. So all together I unpacked, carted, shelved. No, didn't shelve. I didn't hardly do any shelving yesterday. But I did a lot of unpacking and routing 
and RFID stickering. We're converting. All the items are eventually going to have RFID stickers. And on the one hand, that's really nice because you can just put three or four items on a pad and it'll check them all in at once. That is when we get it operating correctly. Right now, it's just one item at a time, which is really no better than scanning. But sometimes technology is like that. It's stubborn. It doesn't want to work correctly right away. Hmm. People are not used to YouTubers in this city. They kind of look at you. One of my favorite YouTubers, he lives in Vancouver. He is hilarious. And he gets a kick out of the way people stare at him sometimes. And especially when he was coming through the Prairie Provinces. He did a cross-Canada trip real quickly here in the spring. He was going to get a puppy. He was puppy. Oh my god, he's a cute puppy. But I digress. He was getting stared at in the Prairie Provinces way more than he does in his home city of Vancouver. A big city like Vancouver, nobody gives two shits what you're freaking doing as long as it's not murdering somebody and probably they'd ignore that too. Who knows in today's society, right? But anyways, in the Prairie Provinces, he got stared at a lot. And he just laughs at it. And the only other thing you can do is wave at them and smile. You know, just be friendly. Uh, I think that's about it for today, folks. I don't really have anything specific to discuss. I really did just come on to say thank you to my wonderful subscribers for giving me such wonderful feedback. That felt so good. It really did. I love you guys. It's awesome. And I hope to get more subscribers. So if you think you want to learn what it's like to be a van dweller in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, or technically I'm a minivan dweller. You want to learn about, you know, watch my trials and tribulations of getting it started. But so far I've got to get rid of my sticks and bricks before I can really do much of anything. But if that interests you, please hit the subscribe button. And click the bell if you want to be notified of any future content. Add comments, hit the like button, subscribe. You guys know the drill. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next video.